Nothing sucks more than shooting a bunch of video for your YouTube channel and then getting home and finding out that another application was using your phone's microphone. So I don't have sound for this and I'll be doing a voiceover. What you're looking at here is where my the base actually for my traveler used to be. So I remove the traveler, remove the base, and I'll be countersinking holes there, the same as I did for the combings, and filling those with epoxy. Uh, and then reinstalling, of course, the wooden base and the traveler. Now, a couple videos ago, you might have remembered, I found footprints on the deck of my boat. Didn't exactly know what they were. And now I've got a much better idea because that is a bunch of poop bottom of my lazarette there, that big dark clump. And so I took a picture of it, went online, and uh, tried to find out what exactly it was. And I narrowed it down to two animals. It's either a raccoon or it's a possum. I think it's a raccoon. So I got critters in my boat. I went through and looked in all the nooks and crannies to make sure that he didn't set up shop for good to become a permanent resident, but um, yeah, that sucks. I've got raccoon shit on my boat. In a prior video, I showed you the uh, Trex decking uh, that I had gotten for such a great price because it was slightly dented or damaged. And this is what I'm doing with it. So I'm cutting it down on a table saw to the dimensions that I need. I've got uh, a little over five and a half inches width I need inch and a half by inch and a half, so I only need three inches of the five, uh, and then I've got some uh, some left over to play with. But let me show you exactly what's involved with cutting these down to where I need them. Okay, here I am back uh, having fun in the storage lazarettes in the cockpit and what I'm doing now is putting tape underneath the holes that I drilled in the deck or the pre-existing holes that were there that were used to attach either the combings or other deck hardware like cleats or the traveler base and the reason why I am putting tape on the bottom here is I'm going to be drilling out larger circles on the deck to fill with epoxy so that when I re-drill the hole, uh, there's plenty of epoxy around it which will keep the uh, deck from getting wet. So, nothing fancy, just painter's masking tape. Taking care of the holes. I got a few left over here and a few over there and uh, that will move on to the bow. Okay, so I've got all my holes taped off um, underneath. I'm going to be using some countersink bits I got from Harbor Freight. I'm going to go with the one in the middle which is half inch. They do, they go up um, three eighths, half inch and three quarters. So without further ado, I think that'll work. Yeah, so you don't want to go too far down. Um, the idea here is to um, make a, a cone shape going down, or a funnel shape going down. Broader at the top, narrow at the bottom, and then fill the hole with epoxy. All right. <clears throat> it's been 24 hours, and my countersunk epoxy holes have cured uh, fairly nicely. Let me show you what they look like. My 
film doesn't fall out. Famous last words. All right, so. As you can see, sometimes there may be a little air pocket there. So what I'm gonna do is uh, just fill that in with maybe some super glue or Gorilla Glue or something like that. Otherwise, uh, they look nice. Given that my uh, tripod fell over yesterday, it's about the umpteenth time I dropped my camera. We're doing this low tech today. I'm just in selfie mode here. But what I want to show you are my backing plates. Okay, typical plywood, um, three quarters of an inch, I think, or half an inch. I'm not sure, maybe three eighths. Anyway, um, I have coated the one side with thin epoxy because we want it to seep into the wood. Uh, just focus, 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 not focusing, okay. Well, that top layer, you can see, is a little bit darker than the middle. And it does a couple of things. First of all, it seals the wood. Secondly, it strengthens it. These are gonna be behind load-bearing deck hardware. And all I'm doing is I put about, um, I got my total boat penetrating here, and I put about uh, eight pumps in, about 20% uh, denatured alcohol, which is in the basement, and a uh, pretty straightforward process. I go with the grain, start in the middle, move it out to the sides. Oops. And I also try to hit the uh, end grain. <sighs> Because that's where most rotting begins. Now these are also going to get painted, so and the paint is really the best uh, protection for wood. And uh, for backing plates, um, you can go metallic, um, but uh, steel rusts, aluminum's a little cost prohibitive. Again, I'm trying to be cost conscious here, and I think these are going to last uh, just as long, and definitely multi, you know, several years. Start in the middle and move it out to the sides. Let it cure, and let me paint it and mount it. Nothing much, uh, nothing more to it than that. So I've done uh, a fair amount of work off camera, and I want to show you what uh, what I've done here because I'm, well, I'm proud of myself. Uh, I've never done anything like this before, and it's one of those things that you see other people doing it on YouTube, and you're like, well, how hard can it be? And then you come to your boat, try to start putting it in, and you're constantly second guessing yourself and asking, am I doing this right? Is my boat going to sink when I put it back in the water? So, oh, this is my traveler. Well, it's not the entire traveler, but it's the traveler trap. I refinished the wood, sealed it, and epoxy, and, and then varnished it over the epoxy to protect it from the sun. Now, one of the things that I didn't like, and I think I showed you in a, in a previous video, when I took this off, there were no backing plates behind it. This takes quite a bit of load. And the deck is a little bit raised here. Uh, and I'm sitting down, I suspect it's from the load of the mainsail over the years it's done that. The only thing it was backed with was nuts and washers. So, I installed backing plates. This is just the port side, the stuff to do the starboard. And I had a big board that, a big piece of plywood that I cut out. It would not go in as one, well, it would go in as one piece, but it, uh, my screws weren't reaching all the way through because, uh, like I said, this is curved, it's a little bit raised, and uh, I couldn't flex the board up as one piece, so I ended up cutting it up into sections, which is probably gonna work better anyway. So yeah, I'm all proud of myself about this. I'm going to have to undo all of it and do it all over again. And let me show you why. Sometimes it's amazing. The smallest detail can keep you off the water. 
this is a four inch machine screw and it's flat headed. That is not what I used on the track here. That is a four inch machine screw with an oval head. Small detail. And that's why it has to come out. Uh, oh well. The holes are already drilled, everything's cut, it's just a matter of uh, replacing the, the screws. But, uh, attention to detail, something I've been working with and struggling with my entire life, and I still have a ways to go. Okay, I'm getting pretty close to being done putting all of my deck hardware back, and uh, looks like I saved the hardest things for last, but I did this unintentionally. Oh man, excuse me. Subway tuna fish sandwich. Okay, here's the issue. These are where my winch pads and my winches go. Okay, the starboard side is going to be just fine or easy to replace to put back in. Okay, got very good access there. And uh, make a, a backing plate uh, and get that in there very easily. Okay? Not so much here because of this ice box or what used to be an ice box. A lot of tartan owners have removed these. So my choices were Remove the box, which I didn't want to do, especially at a, during a time in this project where I'm putting things back on. I don't want to start removing things again. And another option was okay, the pad goes there. Oh, it's a tight fit, especially after tuna. Uh, cutting through there, and that doesn't appeal to me either because this whole panel it's not a fiberglass bulkhead but it's a bulkhead I mean it, it, it's it's weight bearing it supports this portion of the deck <sighs> so I'm gonna have to remove that freaking box most of what I've read at the tartan owners tartan 27 owners group is that uh, it removes fairly easily we'll see the biggest thing the difficulty in getting that thing out according to what the forms have said, is uh, getting it out. I mean, re physically removing it from the cabin because it won't fit through the companion way hatch. Which means I'll be cutting through it with a grinder at some point. My history with a grinder on this boat, let's just say it hasn't been very productive. So I'm not looking forward to that. But uh, I don't see any other way to get the winch in. At least not the way that I want it. I mean, I could screw it in there, just through the top, but without the backing plate. That's not acceptable. So, I'm going to have to tear some shit up. Okay.
Okay, um, I had to remove the uh, shelf, I mean, as you can see, because some of the supports uh, were drilled in to the box here, right along this beam, or piece of wood right here. Now, sometimes when I get into a project, uh, I forget actually to turn on the camera, and uh, that doesn't do, well, it sort of defeats the purpose. Uh, because usually when I do that, I'm involved in something that's kind of difficult, and I think that's probably what most of you would be interested in seeing if you've got a boat, if, well, if you have a Tartan 27, or if you have a boat like the Tartan 27, or something built by the same designers. So, this is a particularly nasty part of this project. I can't remove the fiberglass box right away, because there's a network of drainage hoses underneath. So, and the only issue with this, it's not a big project to take that, or a big thing to take those things out. It's just the issue of access and where they're located. I mean, I've got 18 inches of clearance here. Yeah, my gut will just barely fit underneath all of this. But uh, yeah, I don't want to be buying new hoses because I slice through them with my grinder. Like I slice through the rest of the boat. I have some uh, tight spaces to slither into. And then we'll go get the grinder. All right, change of plans, or my, at least my approach to this. The thought occurred to me, and it might have occurred to you first. I don't know, maybe some of you are hoping for this. Um, hate to spoil your fun, but if I start grinding from the bottom, and attack this completely from there, uh, when this thing breaks free, it's gonna fall on my face. So, I found the hose that was connected directly to this. Actually, there's two openings, and I'm going to use the grinder. I've got a metal uh, grinding blade on it anyway, disc at least, and remove this, and then remove, there's a, there's a perpendicular divider here as well. I'll cut through that, and then I'll make my first, uh, I'll, I'll cut this out from the inside. At least that way we can avoid the uh, Wiley Coyote moment of uh, the piano falling on my head. Okay, time to get the grinder. I've, uh, I think I'm over the hard part. The, uh, the inside uh, metal or steel, uh, I don't know what you would call it, tank I suppose? Anyway, the metal box on the inside is out along with the fiberglass on the bottom. I'm going to try to pull this out with my hammer, see if it'll bang out. I don't want to use the uh, reciprocating saw or multi-tool that I have for this because I don't want to cut through the hull or uh, you know, begin to do that. It's a pretty thick hull, but still, I'd rather not. Um, those are those uh, drainage pipes I was worried about. Turns out they're only connected to the main drainage pipe right there, uh, which is connected to the cockpit. So, uh, I mean, that had to come out anyway. So I'm not too concerned about that. 
Okay, still can't see where I, where I need to see in order to put a vacuum plate in for the jib winch. So we're not there yet, but the end is in sight. Today is a bit of a milestone because it marks the last big project I have to do while the boat is out of the water. And as you might have guessed, looking at my panning the camera here, today, tow rail is back on the boat. Now, this is the tow rail that I took off the boat that I wasn't going to put back on the boat because I was gonna turn that, which is Trex decking, into this tow rail. And the blade on my table saw wasn't fine enough or was the proper blade to cut through that, which is fairly dense. It was one, you know, the blade was drifting and I wasn't getting clean cuts. So I'm retreating on this project for this year. I can work on it over the winter. I'm gonna get the tow rail back on temporarily, which means I'm gonna be using very cheap caulking, uh, just enough to keep the water out and keep the tow rail on. Um, I mean, it's screwed in, so it doesn't really need to be kept on. And the only thing I'm gonna be doing for the rest of the season is day sailing. This is gonna get torn off again over the winter time so that I can replace it with, hopefully, my newly fabricated Trex decking that I was so proud of myself for finding very, very cheaply. Good idea, um, just not a very good understanding of what's involved with the project. And I think you can uh, sum up the majority of building that way. So off I go, I'm gonna have help today. My brother-in-law is gonna help me out, so I should be able to get this on today. We'll see if my predictions are correct. So far, they haven't been. This might actually be the first project that I overestimated the amount of time that it was going to take to complete instead of underestimated, which is a pleasant surprise. But this is the first portion of the deck, tow rail, and cap rail. It's going back on. And, yeah, I thought this was going to be a bear of a project, um, but it's turning out to be okay. I actually have the help of my awesome brother-in-law. Hey! Want to... No, 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 I want you to take the, the camera, okay? So, this stuff comes out pretty easy. Not on, It's not like the, uh, the other marine sealant that I've used. And you actually can over-apply it. Now you get about 10 minutes before it begins to set up. And yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you do this all the way down. And the way I do is uh, do some wire cutters and put some ridges into it. Spread it out. It spreads like the uh, consistency of uh, cake ice cream. Um, this is only going on for a few months, so I'm using very cheap uh, acrylic DAP from Home Depot because I'm tearing all this stuff off in the fall so I can make room for my permanent tow rail, which is going to be made out of Trex. But for now, all I need is for it to stay on the boat, keep out the water, and it's going to look horrible. Nothing I can do about it right now. Um, okay, so we're going to do this times four. Mm-hmm.